I feel like this is one of those videos that's gonna anger a lot of feminists as well as trad cons. So we were down there for a lot of the we did a live show and I go around the table because people are like, oh Myron, you're controversial. You said you guys should have sex with 50 girls. So we had 20 girls on the panel. I Myron tells men as advice that they should have 50 sexual partners before they get married. And there's many reasons for this. Part of it is to do battle with the degeneracy of women so that men are armed with the knowledge and experience to understand the way women operate on average. It's, in my opinion, good advice, but this is the reason why I said trad cons are gonna be upset because this is something that people like Pin Shapiro, Matt Walsh would completely balk at. They would freak out and be like, oh my gosh, what are you telling men to do that for? <laughs> you should be marry the first girl you see at church. I go through, how many guys do you think the average girl slept with throughout her lifetime that's 25 years old that been to college? One girl- This is what Myron asked the women on the panel. Says 10, another girl says seven, another girl says 80, another girl says 50, another girl says 70, another girl says 10, blah, blah. Multiple, two girls said 70, another said 80 by the time they're out of college. Who are these guys, D1 athletes that are like 6'6"? Six, six? What the fuck? One girl says 10, another girl says seven, another girl says 80, another girl says 50, another girl says 70, another girl says 10, blah, blah. And what I did was- I There's a lot I could say about that, but I will say it is a common conception held by feminists that men and women are psychologically and physically the same, and, and they think conveniently for their ideology that men and women play by the same rules. And so if a woman who can very easily have uh, 50 different bodies by the time she's 24, that men definitely do as well. Because to acknowledge that it would be more difficult for men to attract women than it is for women to attract men would be to acknowledge that there are different coherent parameters that men and women play by. And even acknowledging that there are such things as coherent parameters already put you in a domain that is triggering and angering to feminists because they want to believe that everything is socially constructed. There's no right and wrong answers. It's about 20 25, to 25, 30. right? Then I went around and asked all the girls, okay, do you think it's more attractive if the man has more sexual experience or the woman? Universally, the man has to have more sexual experience. Then I was like, boom, that is why I got to fuck. Yeah, just confirming hypergamy there, which is something that for some reason, trad cons, even people like Michael Knowles haven't acknowledged properly which is that women date up and across socioeconomic hierarchies. This is, I would say, at the core of the red pill understanding of women. The red pill, I was explaining this to somebody on Twitter recently. The red pill colloquially just means accepting and understanding reality for what it objectively is. But most of the time it's pertaining to understanding intersexual dynamics between men and women. The core fundamental principle of intersexual dynamics, one of them is, well, the first of course is that men and women are psychologically and physically different, that premise allows you to understand and investigate how they're different. But the biggest thing that you will understand in how they're different is the way women select for mates and the way men select for mates. Women date up and across socioeconomic hierarchies, men do not. That's the reason why women need to be able to look up to the guy that they're with. And that's the reason they're saying the man that they're going to be attracted to is gonna have more sexual experience than them because they wanna be able to look up to the guy. But because it's harder for men to have sexual partners than it is for women to have sexual partners, that is skewed and it's even more skewed when you take away the moral landscape that women would have to adhere in that would keep them pure and basically keep them from running around being hoes because if you're at church if you have a strong family that says you know you shouldn't be immoral then you're not going to be then as a woman you're not going to have 50 bodies by the time you're 24. but there are many families many broken households that tell women that any type of objective parameter is by default oppressive and corrupt in its resemblance to masculine standards. The average chick at 25 years old has 20 to 25 bodies. You should be at least double as experienced as her, if not more, right? If they're but going to adhere to hypergamy. That people look at me like I'm crazy when I say this shit, but it's like, bro, if the girl has more sexual experience than you as the man, you're putting yourself in a position where she has the leverage because you're not sexually experienced. You don't know what's better. You get your pee pee wet one time. Ooh, I'll commit to her like a fucking simp. Next thing what's you know, you're spending 20,000. What's interesting is that trad cons and feminists get angry at this message, but it's true. And I think it goes beyond just the message being unflattering to women. It does something like acknowledge or even admit to the necessity for brutal masculine competence and justification for status seeking in men. Basically a total endorsement of male competition. And it's very interesting to see the right get upset at that. And they do get upset at that when you see them become enraged at alpha male billionaires like Andrew Tate or, or other extremely rich, competent men that drive like multi-million dollar cars, conservatives tend to get angry at that for some reason. And I think it's because they haven't accepted all of the nuances to masculine competition, which by default will require breaking barriers and therefore is orthogonal to the conservative ethos as a whole. But the next level human operating system software is going to be an acknowledgement and um, understanding of why masculine competition is useful, um, which will, of course, 
which will, of course, then justify uh, capitalism as you understand that capitalism is an emergent principle, not from an economic theory, but from nature itself in the Pareto distribution, as well as a conceptual understanding of distributions in probability so that you can realize why men must compete, the personalities of the men that compete, and the way the world actually works as a result of psychological principles. Just as a basic, basic understanding of the way the world works, I think that will heavily aid in conservatives getting over this. In terms of the left, their problem is so much more horrendous because they actually are at war with reality. So if you want to hear me explain how the left can get over that, I have several videos on it. I talk about it in almost every single video, but I don't want this one to be too long. Like I said, the left's problem is actually far more difficult to overcome than conservatives because ideologically they have aligned themselves with the antithesis of coherent objective frameworks. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, guys.